Hermosa Beach is a great place to live because it is a coastal city. The beach is absolutely beautiful here. The quality of life is amazing here. It has an award-winning school district. It has a well-run city and a dedicated team of city staff that help everything run and make everything great here. It's special to me because not only is the police department fantastic, but the community members love us. They're all part of the team. Hermosa Beach is special and a great place to live, honestly, in my opinion, because of the intimate nature of our small business community. And they care about what happens with the future of Hermosa Beach. They're involved in decisions that are made and the future of this community. Because it's such a small and compact city, it brings all of us together. It compels all of us to work together in ways that I don't think is possible in larger cities. Hermosa Beach is over 100 years old. We're on Santa Monica Bay in the greater Los Angeles region. We have 20,000 residents who love to live here for all the recreational amenities we have and our proximity to everything else that greater LA has to offer. Our response to the pandemic first and foremost to act as quickly as possible and then to create opportunities for people to do the things that they need to do to conduct their lives in ways that were different from before. This led to our Hermosa Shines plan, which is our community's recovery and resilience plan. It's our effort to help our community to bounce back, but also to bounce back in a very resilient and sustainable way. Shines is an acronym for safety, health, infrastructure, new technology, economic development, and service. Our first and foremost priority was public safety. My initial plan to bring Hermosa Beach back from the economic impacts from this pandemic included bringing the executive team together quickly, right away. This includes all of the members of my leadership team, and we met daily. We met daily to talk about the impacts of COVID and the pandemic on our residents, on our businesses. So for brick and mortar businesses such as the yoga studios that weren't able to have their classes indoors, we invited them to do it outdoors. We had the opportunity to do outdoor dining decks with the complements of um, music outdoors. We had the opportunity to have more advertising outdoors with A-frames and banners saying what you could come and take out groceries from various restaurants or you could get your takeout. We had community members organizing efforts to shop local and pick up. We had a, a bunch of efforts the city really championed and allowed and extended themselves beyond what were regulations before to allow the businesses to to reach beyond and try and figure out how to stay afloat during the pandemic. They were very quick to act and approve dining decks and that made a huge difference for us. They allowed the outdoor uh, music, which other beach cities you know, still have yet to do, continue to have discussions with the city uh, at all levels about things that we can do. So as a result of the pandemic, the Economic Development Committee at the city formed and the stakeholder group, which is made up of a bunch of uh, business owners, property owners and so forth in town, as well as some planning commissioners and city council members to create a force of people who could decide how to move forward out of this pandemic and how to really help Hermosa move into the next phase of really flourishing as an economy. You can see right here on Pier Plaza and in downtown Hermosa Beach that we've transformed the roadways and the public spaces to allow our businesses to thrive during the pandemic. And they dovetail well into our efforts to create a walkable, bikeable community. With the lane reconfiguration in downtown Hermosa Beach, we added a bike lane on Hermosa Avenue and Pier Avenue. This has been a tremendous benefit for all of us who love to bike, who love to skateboard, who love to just be in the outdoors and actually move about the city differently. We needed to make sure that our community who had these bikes and was using these bikes were able to keep these bikes safe. And we were able to get out into the areas where a lot of the bikes started to interact with pedestrians to make sure that they were safe and engage in education programs using social media to get the word out, be safe, but enjoy and let's use our bikes to the, to the fullest extent. We became a much more relevant part of the city partnership, and we worked with all the city teams. We developed a program that we call Front Lawn Meetings. If there was a neighborhood issue, a concern, or just wanting to get to know the police department a little bit better, we would ask somebody to host it in their front lawn. We would go to them, they could invite their neighbors. And Project Secure was an operation where officers would drive around in the routine patrols, when they would see something that was a potential crime, uh, a garage door open, they'd either go knock on the door 
they would try and reach the owner, and if they couldn't, they would do what they could to secure the location. We developed a project secure card, which basically had a little bit of information they could fill in on this date at this time, and we dropped that inside the garage before we closed this. Huge success. We had community members calling us, thanking us, sharing it with their neighbors, and just the talk of project secure was something that ultimately created more awareness and more safety because people started locking their stuff. What's next for our city is a future filled with opportunities that are born out of the lessons learned through this pandemic. We have, as a city team, realized how resourceful we are, how adaptable we are, and our residents have this opportunity to experience this new city hall that we have, this new approach to public service. We realize that we can adapt quickly, and we do adapt quickly.